Hi there, thank you so much for making your heart health a priority and taking the time to watch this video. My name is Nikki Dent and I'm the CEO of Heart Research Australia. We're a national not-for-profit organisation that funds first stage research into the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of heart disease. And sadly, that's Australia's leading cause of death. In addition to funding life-saving research, we aim to share vital information with the community to help reduce the devastating impact that heart disease has on families and our community. Please note, whilst this content has been provided by cardiologists, it is always best to talk to your local GP about any specific issues you may be experiencing, and they can refer you to a cardiologist near you. We hope you find this information helpful, and don't forget to sign up to our Heart Health Club to hear regular information like this from our heart health experts. Thank you so much. Every 10 minutes, an Australian has a heart attack. That's roughly 54,000 Australians every year. So would you know if you or someone else was experiencing a heart attack? A common phrase we as cardiologists use is time is muscle. A heart attack most commonly occurs when a narrowing in a heart artery suddenly becomes blocked, stopping the flow of blood to the heart. The longer it takes someone to seek treatment for a heart attack, the more damage that is done to the heart muscle. On a cellular level, once the muscle cell has died, this damage is irreparable. That's why it's important for you to know the early warning signs and what to do in case of a heart attack. So what does a heart attack look like? Many people assume that all heart attacks look like they do in movies sudden and intense pain in the chest that causes someone to collapse. In reality though, the signs can be less obvious and can vary considerably between individuals. Whilst chest pain is the classic symptom of a heart attack, other symptoms can occur in addition to or instead of chest discomfort. These symptoms may include dull pain, chest tightness or discomfort that becomes more severe or doesn't go away, jaw and neck pain, Severe pain that is often described as crushing, a squeezing or choking sensation, nausea, feeling sick in the stomach, fainting, sweating, pains in the shoulder and or arms, pain in the chest to the back, similar sensations to heartburn, for instance, sudden difficulty in breathing, sudden overwhelming fatigue or weakness. The signs of a heart attack may vary between men and women. We have created a separate video for women's heart health. If you or someone around you is experiencing any or a combination of these symptoms for more than a few minutes, immediately call 000 for an ambulance. The two biggest mistakes people make when it comes to heart attacks are assuming the signs are the same for everyone and dismissing their symptoms thinking they'll go away. Every moment you delay seeking much needed medical attention causes more potential damage to the heart muscle. If you think someone may be having a heart attack, regard this as an emergency. Don't waste vital moments. Rather than going to a doctor's clinic, dial 000, ask for an ambulance, report a possible heart attack, give the person aspirin if you have any, unless there's been specific advice not to take this particular medication. Make sure they rest quietly while you wait for transport or an ambulance. There are many risk factors that can lead to develop heart disease. Some you can control and some you can't. The more you have, the greater your chance of developing coronary heart disease. 90% of Australians have at least one risk factor for heart disease. Some of these risk factors that you can control include smoking, your cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, being inactive, diabetes, being overweight, or having an unhealthy diet. The risk factors you can't control are your age. The older you are, the higher the risk of heart disease. Your gender, men are at higher risk of heart disease. However, women's risk grows and may be equal to men after they experience menopause. Ethnic background, people of some origins have much higher risk, such as those of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander descent and those from the Indian subcontinent. Family history, heart disease is hereditary, 
So if someone in your family has experienced cardiovascular disease, this increases your risk. If you are in any of these categories, it's worth having a regular heart check with your GP to monitor things like your blood pressure and cholesterol to help minimise those risk factors that can be controlled. Even if you have no modifiable risks, that doesn't mean you won't have a heart attack. Up to 15% of people who have a heart attack do not have any significant modifiable risk factors, which is why it's important for everyone to know what to look for and what to do if a situation should arise. G'day, my name's Chris Russell. As someone who's experienced a heart attack I certainly didn't see coming, I know how confusing it can be to rethink one's lifestyle choices and build new heart healthy habits. Cardiologist Dr. Eddie Barron has developed some simple steps to help people live a heart healthy lifestyle that I've found makes it possible to maintain for the long term. He called it the 4M approach. M for move, meals, measurement and mental approach. Following these steps can help you minimise the heart disease risk factors that you can control and reduce your overall risk of developing heart disease. Firstly, move. Now exercise has many benefits beyond simple fitness and flexibility. It stimulates the body's immune system, reduces blood thickening so it clots less easily and improves brain function and lowers blood pressure. Then there's meals. Now there's a lot of confusing and conflicting information about what you should and shouldn't eat, but the four M's makes it pretty simple. Eat intelligently. We all know eating donuts every day isn't going to be good for your health, but we also know that eating salad all day every day doesn't really give us the best quality of life. The key is to understand what you're eating and make better choices and then, as my mother used to say, have everything in moderation. A good nutrition extends beyond controlling your intake of cholesterol, calories and chocolate, but improving your knowledge of nutrition and what makes up the food you're eating can help you make more informed choices that lead to improved health. Then there's measurement. Keeping track of your health measurements, such as your cholesterol levels, blood pressure, weight and waist circumference helps you keep on top of any changes you may experience and enables you to react faster as well as see progress if you're making positive steps to change these. And then last but by no means least, mental approach. Many studies show your state of mind can protect as well as damage heart health. Important risk factors that may lead to heart disease include stress, anger and depression. And using exercise as an outlet for these emotions has been proven to be effective, plus has the added benefit of ticking off the move step as well. So many have found these steps to be helpful when they've had to make shifts in their lifestyle after a heart event, and I hope you find them helpful too. I certainly have. Managing our mental health is not only something we need to keep on top of for our overall health, but also something to be mindful if you do experience a heart attack, heart surgery or a cardiac event. You can be left with a feeling of shock, unexpected changes in mood and emotions. Around 75% of people experience the cardiac blues after a heart event and it's a normal part of recovery. For most people, the cardiac blues resolve in the first weeks or months after the cardiac event and your mood will gradually improve. If your mood is not improving, however, or is getting worse during the months after your heart event, you may need to seek professional help. Talk to your GP about getting a mental health care plan. You can find more information on the Heart Research Australia website on the Cardiac Blues webpage. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We hope you found it helpful. Our vision at Heart Research Australia is to keep families together for longer and we hope this video helps you stay heart healthy and well.